Is that it? How about that one? Obviously, if you only have one circuit breaker that is mislabeled, that is a really easy fix as long as you do it right away and don't wait until your next project. The biggest problem comes in when you have multiple circuit breakers that aren't labeled properly and you want to go through and document everything in your house to make sure it's up to date. This process is going to be a little bit tedious, especially if you're wanting to remap and check every single circuit. I highly recommend documenting your circuit breakers as you go versus changing the labeling as you check each circuit because inevitably you're going to have circuits that go different places. Believe me, I know this from experience. And so make sure you save the labeling process for the end. I've created a sheet that I like to reference that will let me write down everything that a circuit breaker goes to. And I actually have an online version of this as well. So I can go in, edit the spreadsheet, put as much information in there as I want to, and then go back, clean it up later and create all of my labels at the end. Now, if you want to track everything in the spreadsheet and you don't want to have to mess with relabeling the panel, then what you can do is you can create a QR code. That's a link back to that spreadsheet, print that QR code out and then tape it onto your panel. That way, the next time you have any electrical work you need to do, all you have to do is take your phone out, scan your QR code, and that will instantly open the spreadsheet on your phone so that way you can see exactly what circuit breaker you need to turn off. If you want a copy of this, I'll have a link in the video description below where you can go and pick it up. It's a completely free resource and you can either print this out and document it by writing everything in, or you can even leave it on your computer and document everything there so that way you have as much description as possible and you don't have to worry about fitting everything in on a tiny label. I'll even have a link and instructions on how you can set up that QR code as well. So what you would end up doing is turning off one circuit breaker at a time and going around identifying what outlets and what switches no longer have power. And to make things easier, I would start with breakers that are closest to the electrical panel to minimize that back and forth that you're gonna to have to do to go and test the different outlets and light switches to see what's working and what's not working. As you progress through the circuits, you can turn off ones that are further and further away or to make things even easier, you can use a partner or a helper to help you identify what things no longer have power. So that way they can tell you what doesn't have power and you can do the documentation. Using a cell phone or walkie talkies to communicate with a buddy can help a lot with this too. And this is especially important if you have a home that's fairly large or has multiple floors. You can either test outlets by plugging something into them, like say a radio or a light, or you can use a tester like this, which will light up whenever there's power going to those outlets. This can be a lot easier than hauling something around like a floor lamp. Obviously to test lights, it's really simple. Just go and start turning off lights and see which ones no longer work. As you go through and document what rooms and what outlets and what switches no longer have power and they're controlled by a specific circuit, make sure you also take note of things that seem a little bit odd too. So for example, if you've cut off power to a room, but you still have one outlet that's still powered, then make note of that. This can be really helpful because at the end of your documentation process, you can go back and check those different anomalies and see which breaker it's actually controlled by. I can't tell you the number of times I ran into a situation where there was a breaker that controlled something in a completely different area of the house that I would have never dreamed provided the power. Now to track down the anomalies, the things that you couldn't find when you went through the first time, what you would do is you'd go back to your breaker panel and then start turning off each individual circuit breaker one at a time until it kills the power to either that outlet or to that light. Once you've identified it, go ahead and document that and then move on to the next one. Now, if your panel is completely jacked up or your label's gone, another thing you can do is reverse the process and use a circuit breaker finder. So how this works is you would take one end of this and plug it into an outlet, and then you would take the other end and then go over the circuit breakers in your panel. Once you find the circuit that this is plugged into, this will flash and make noises to let you know you've identified that breaker. Then at that time, you can obviously make your documentation and then move on to the next. You can even use this process with lights too, because you can take a socket adapter and then screw this into a light socket. Then you can take a cheater plug and plug it into the socket adapter. So that way you can plug in your tester. So basically all of this would be connected together and then screwed into your light socket. And then you can go through the same process and identify what breaker this is on. Now, obviously you wouldn't do this for any kind of floor lighting, but this can be really handy, especially when it comes to lighting that's in the ceiling or any other light fixtures in your house. Before you remove the label or erase anything, I recommend you take a picture of it with your cell phone because my general rule of thumb is it's better to have documentation you'll never need than to need documentation that you no longer have. For relabeling the panel, you have a few different options. One, you can either go back and then update the label inside of the panel. If it's written with pencil, you can probably erase that and then update it with a pen, ideally. You can also use a label maker to put the information over the top of the existing label. If your label's intact and there's no more room to write additional information, or if it's written in pen and you just want to start over, then you can either remove the label by using some adhesive remover and a scraper, or you can label over it with some specialty labels that you can pick up at either a home improvement store or even online like on amazon.com. 
If your label is damaged though, I highly recommend completely replacing it and starting over. Just as a reminder, don't forget to download my Circuit Breaker Index. The link is in the video description below and this can make your life a ton easier. If this video was helpful, be sure to hit the like button and also check out this other video next. I'm sure you'll like it too. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.